Hey, we're back. It is time for Resistive Forces Part 2, in which we're going to derive a whole bunch of cool stuff for a mass M dropped from rest. Like this. So, what we're going to specifically do is this. We have a mass M dropped from rest on a planet with gravitational field strength G and it's dropped through a medium in which the resistive force is again proportional to the velocity, F resistive is BV. But what we want to do is three things. First, we want to derive an equation for the terminal velocity. Then we want to find velocity as a function of time for this mass. And then we want to find the acceleration as a function of time. So let's start from the beginning, figuring out the terminal velocity. Now we're, we're definitely going to start with a free body diagram as we always do. Here we go. It's a mass M right here. And we've got this time two different forces on it. We've got a force MG on it pointing this way. MG. I'm going to make this the positive direction downward. And uh, as we generally want to do, we want to make the direction of acceleration positive. It is downward in this case. But we also have a resistive force this way of magnitude BV. And again, B is a constant which uh, is just given as whatever we want it to be. It might be given numerically, or it might just be given as the letter B. So what we want to first do is figure out the terminal velocity. Now what does the terminal velocity actually mean? That is the velocity where it is no longer doing what? It's no longer accelerating. So here's a piece of paper that pretty quickly reaches its terminal velocity where it's no longer accelerating. So let's go ahead and write out our Newton's second law equation for that situation. We've got net force Y equals MAY, and I am going to uh, leave off the Y subscripts because we're only dealing with the Y direction. The forces are, notice I've made MG down as positive because that's the direction of acceleration. And so let's make that MG minus BV, and that will equal MA. I'm just going to eliminate the subscript Y. Now, in this situation, when we're trying to determine the terminal velocity, what's the acceleration once we've reached terminal velocity? Well, it is zero. It's no longer accelerating. That does not mean the object stops. That just means it stops accelerating. So in this case, for terminal velocity, what is V term? What we want to do is make that A into zero. So that means we have MG minus BV equals zero. So all we got to do here is solve for V. So this will be V term right here. I'm just going to write V terminal because that is what we call the velocity when it's no longer accelerating. So let's just go ahead and solve for V term. Uh, I just get MG equals B times V term. And that means that MG over B equals V terminal. There it is. We have solved for the terminal velocity. So once the velocity reaches that, it will no longer accelerate. It will just stay at that velocity as it continues to fall. And terminal velocity is, for a skydiver, it might be something like 200 miles an hour. Uh, for a piece of paper, it might be 2 miles an hour. It depends on a bunch of different stuff. And again, we are assuming that the, uh, the resistive force is proportional to the velocity to the first power.